Welcome back to History Lane on Hedro TV Nigeria. If you are new to this channel, kindly click on this subscribe button for more historical events. This is the story of the Igbo landing of 1803, an event that Igbo slaves choose to drown in the ocean with their freedom then become another man's property for the rest of their lives. During this transatlantic slave trade in Nigeria, the Igbo tribe were revived because they were industrious, proud, independent, and also performed their duties with little or no supervision. In May 1803, around 75 Igbo slaves were being transported by sea revolted by capsizing their ship and drawn themselves while singing in Igbo, a song that translates to the water spirit brought us, the water spirit would take us home. Igbo landing is a historic site at Dumbak Creek on St. Simon's Island in Georgia. In 1803, one of the largest mass suicides of enslaved people took place when Igbo captives from what is now Nigeria were taken to the Georgia coast. In May 1803, the Igbo and other West African captives arrived in Savannah, Georgia on the slave ship ship the wanderer they were purchased for an average of hundred dollars each by slave merchants who were john copper and thomas padding for forced labor on their plantations in simon's island the chained slaves were packed under the deck of a coastal vessel the schooner york which would take them to St. Simon's Island. Other sources say the voyage took place abroad the Moravia. During the voyage, around 75 Igbo slaves rose in rebellion. They took control of the ship, drowned their captors, and in the process caused the grounding of the ship in Duba Creek. They thereby accepted the protection of their god, Chuku, and death over the alternative of enslavement. The sequence of actual events is unclear, as most of the historical incidents was passed down by oral tradition. A common version credited to Roosevelt King a white overseer on the nearby Pierce Butler Plantation, which is Butler Island Plantation, is that the slaves, once ashore, walked into the Dobank Creek in unison, singing and chanting in Igbo under the leadership of someone who seems to be like a high priest or a high Igbo chief among them. This mutiny has been referred to in some quarters as the first major freedom match in America's history. The event has recently been incorporated into the history of coastal Georgia schools in America. A 19th century account of the event identifies the captain by the surname Patterson and names Roswell King as the person who recovered the bodies of the drawn. A letter describing the events written by Savannah slave dealer Williams Main states that the evil walked into the marsh where 10 to 12 drawn, while some were savaged by bounty hunters who received $10 a head from Spadin and Cooper. According to some source, Survivors of the Igbo Rebellion were taken to Canon Point on St. Simon's Island and Sapelo Island. May 1803 will forever be remembered in black history as one that showed the courage of the black race in the face of subjection. 
to date, the Igbo landing is seen as a heroic and brave act in the African-American folklore. The site where this event occurred is, told, is known today as Igbo landing. It is called the landing because the captives did not arrive in America. The slave dealers brought them to America against their will. Behans has also depicted and pay homage to the Igbo landing in a work called Love Drafts. Black Panther movie also refers to these events. Kindly subscribe to this channel. Subscription is free. And also do well to click on the like button, comment down below, and share this video. This is EduTV Nigeria.